If you just look at the molecular level, uh, the Human Genome Project has revealed that we have about 25,000 genes, far fewer than they originally expected. The Chimpanzee Genome Project has now sequenced the entire chimpanzee genome and their genome is virtually the same as ours. They've got the same kinds of proteins, the same kind of genes. You can hardly tell the difference. Yet, there's an obvious difference, and if you can't explain it in terms of genes, what can you exp explain it in terms of? And the answer is, I think, morphogenetic fields. Just as you can build two different buildings with the same bricks and cement, if you have two different plans, uh, you can build different organisms with different fields, even if the constituent molecules are very similar as they are in humans and chimpanzees. The DNA is like a library book. These are all the possible proteins from earthworms right up to us. It's all the same library, but you've got to know which book to take out of the library. This is the big problem in genetics itself, is trying to explain how the body knows which book to take out of the genetic library. And we think the body field is what decides which piece of information is taken from the DNA. Many cultures of the past have explored the energetic system of the body. Today, researchers theorize that the body does have a field of energy known as the morphogenic field or the body field. There's a hierarchy of fields organizing our bodies. There's the field of the whole body, there's the fields of the organs, and then the fields of the tissues, and then the fields of the cells within those. The field of our own body is within and around the body. There's an overall field, and then there's subsidiary fields, sort of modular fields for arms, legs, and the different organs. The advantage of fields is that they're intrinsically holistic. All fields are holistic. The gravitational field is. You can't slice a bit out of it. If you cut a flatworm into ten different pieces, each part can grow into a new worm. Now, how is that possible? If it was a machine, uh, that wouldn't happen. If you cut up a machine, all you get is a broken machine. Um, but if you cut up a magnet, a field system, then you, however many little bits of magnet you produce, each has a complete magnetic field. And it was this analogy with magnetic fields that led developmental biologists to suggest the idea of morphogenetic fields in the first place. And this was way back in the 1920s. And this field is now a crucial concept in developmental biology. 